Friday afternoon, folks, downtown Honolulu. Ted Ralston here, your host on Where the Road Leads at our Think Tech Hawaii studios. Um, the, the show that's known by the guests it brings on. And once again, we've probably exceeded our uh, weekly allowable here in terms of the guests we've got on. We've got Dr. Chuck Burroughs on, just returned from Washington, D.C., and uh, has been on our show before. And uh, General Retired Daryl Long uh, with... Um, in his first week of retirement from uh, active duty in the Air Force, and uh, he's with us today. So, and by the way, anybody who uh, was uh, watching the show who was at your retirement, Daryl, I think we'll probably never see a retirement like that again. That was uh, <laughs> really a, a, such a, a, a heartfelt tribute going on, not only to you, but from you to the people who were there. I thought that was, as a, a personal experience, was an incredible, uh, experience. But anyway, we've got uh, uh, Chuck and Daryl on again today. We're going to be talking about uh, where the road leads, in this case, to an environment near you. Both Chuck and, and Daryl are very interested and involved in retirements and different perspectives, perhaps, but they're all kind of coming together. What we're, what we're seeing, and I think Chuck will show us here, uh, is that the perception of the environment and our responsibility to it and the role we play in fostering uh, the environment is changing from one of maybe exploitation of 50 years ago to a, a, a care and a, and, and a growth in the environment and a security and a future for it, uh, all the way to what New Zealand has been doing, which is giving a, uh, an environment or a waterway um, the rights of a person so it can kind of take care of itself. In any case, uh, these new ways to think about the environment are emerging and are task here on the show is to pull them together as much as we can and find places of common uh, where they where they join. So um, and ultimately getting down to personal responsibility. Each of us has a responsibility to the environment in some way and you two gentlemen are deeply involved in that and seeing it in a, in a great way that's great for us who maybe weren't part of that to, to catch on and, and catch up with you. So Chuck, uh, you just got back from D.C. telling a story yes. about Kauai Nui and other things. Tell us in your own words, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on with Anacostia and the river watershed activity there, and how does that fit with what we're doing here? Well, about two years ago, um, a team from the Anna Smithsonian Anacostia Community Museum, uh, who have a special project called the Urban Waterways Project, uh, came to Honolulu, uh, where I first met uh, the team. In fact, it was in New Wano with the uh, New Wano um, uh, Awai group. This is the group in New Wano that cares for the uh, conservation of the ancient Awai systems that used the water at that time, going back to the historical period when the Hawaiians lived there, for the growing apparel, where the Awai uh, ch would channel into different areas from upper New Wano. In fact, even down to um, the city of Honolulu, where River Street is located in, in early times. Of course, you know, through uh, development, etc., and especially when taro is no longer grown in New Wano, as it was in Waikiki and Manoa and in Kalihi uh, in those times, uh, and you have houses being developed, these houses still retain the Hawaii system going through their residence. But the problem is to get the residents there to be sure that they clean up their Hawaii and is not blocked up and overflowed into the streets and, and, and elsewhere. So um, my being with this community uh, gave me this opportunity of meeting this group from the Smithsonian Anacostia Museum who came to Hawaii to find out what communities are doing uh, with their waterways. The waterways could be um, uh, streams or rivers or wetlands, uh, or even, you know, the um, storm drains in which uh, it, it, uh, the water is then enters, you know, the canals, etc. And yeah, we now have those, those stencils on all drains that say this drain leads directly to the ocean, right? So people are starting to get the picture of, uh, yeah. of, the, con of the responsibility yeah. and the consequences. Yeah. Storm drainage. Yeah, so 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 it was quite interesting to them that at least this group in New Orleans was, was concerned about the restoring and and to uh, protect uh, this ancient uh, uh, Y system. 
But at that meeting, I also invited the team to come out to Coyne Marsh, because this is where the, the major ongoing uh, projects uh, are being done. And of course, the history of the early Hawaiians, how they were able to manage uh, their watershed within the system, which we call the Ahupua, that leads from the mountains you know, to the oceans, or from the oceans to the mountains. Uh, to use and manage the flow of water uh, for drinking purposes, for bathing purposes, uh, cooking, as well as mainly to, to grow their main staple crop, the taro. Uh, especially in, in Kailua, and this is the largest ahupua uh, in the uh, Ko'olaupoko district of about maybe uh, 11 different um, uh, Ahupua located from Kualo all the way uh, out to, to Waimanao. So you're kind of taking a system look at the Ahupua. Yes. It, it's yes. the whole concept of the water flow from yes. the ridge to the reef and, yes. the, and the sustainment of, of life in the, in the middle. Yeah. And, and especially how the Hawaiians were able to manage this e ecosystem. How to manage it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and environmental sustainable at that particular time. Of course, then, you know, as with all places uh, throughout the world, throughout the nation, um, waterways, uh, rivers, streams, wetlands, you know, uh, was not only used as a means for navigation uh, and also for their uses, uh, for farming, et cetera, but it's also uh, places where they dumped, you know, the refuse. Which you know? takes us back to Waikiki and, and the Alawai, where yeah. Daryl's been uh, spending yeah. his yeah. mental calories. <laughs> That's a completely built up area. Yeah. So it's got completely altered yeah. hydrology yeah. and uh, deposits and, yeah. uh, and, but there's still some remnants, are right. there not, of the yeah. old flow. Yeah. So, so, so through the historic farming uh, practices, uh, cattle ranching and so forth, and, um, and within, you know, uh, Hawaii's recent uh, periods, you know, from the 40s, you know, to, to now, uh, it's the urbanization uh, of these waterways, the impacts on urbanization upon the present waterways. And this is what this uh, 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 team was, was interested in finding out. What are the present impacts of the uh, of, of Quiney Marsh due to the uh, process of urbanization in, in, uh, in, in, in Kailua? Um, so actually, you know, Quiney Marsh, the streams, are surrounded by urban communities, residents, houses, streets, uh, schools, etc. They came all the way from Washington, D.C. to find out how to answer that question, and they ended up in Kamoinui. Yes. That's but to find out, you know, what the impacts have been going on there and what we're doing about it. And actually, you know, uh, in Kaido, the Kaido community has been concerned with this for, for many years about, you know, uh, 40, uh, 50, 60 years of going back, you know, to proposals at that time that this is a place that we could, as far as the marsh itself, fill it up as was being done in Waikiki, in Al Moana, and then and building the shopping center as with the Al Moana uh, uh, shopping center. And this was also proposed uh, in Koinui. But due to the efforts uh, of the um, residents, the citizens in Kailua, you know, there was a stop to that effort there. And this is where the, through the Lanikai Kailua uh, Alto Circle at that time, uh, formed the Kwainu Heritage Foundation that took an active, you know, position uh, not to what, uh, um, dump, not to build in, in Kwainu Marsh. And so over the years, we have especially the, uh, the uh, Hawaiian organizations such as the Kaibuan Civic Club, Ahuhui Malama Ikomakahi, a Hawaiian organization that's taken the effort in working, uh, this is where the collaboration comes in, in working uh, with the state, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, with State Parks and, and the uh, Division of uh, Forestry and Wildlife uh, in ways in which we could conserve, in ways in which we could uh, restore and then also provide the educational programs uh, to educate, um, you know, the residents and visitors that uh, live in Kailua and come to Kailua about the, uh, the, the, the worth of, of wetlands itself. Of, of that work that's been done in Kauinui, how, do, yeah. how can we relate that to what Daryl's been uh, developing in the, the, the community involvement aspects and the 
uh, the protection, if you will, of the Olawai, call it the Olawai watershed, even though Olawai is sort of an after the fact uh, creation. Uh, is there a way we can tie those together? The well, I think, you know, with urbanization, uh, as we talked about it, at some point, the population base is going to require us to, to use some of this land. Uh, you know, some of it you can keep as wetland, but some you might just, there's no way you're going to do it when our population reaches. But even if, if we do have to use it, how do you take care of it so that you complement the use with urbanization, with what nature has given you, versus just driving to a technological or construction uh, problem and then uh, um, creating more problems. You know, I lived in Hawaii Kai. You know, Hawaii Kai was a swamp also yes. before. I mean, there are a lot of problems with uh, earth movement and with shifting of, uh, of, of soil and things. So, I mean, Waikiki, again, would be a swamp if we didn't take care of the olive oil, or, or it would be just a, a hazardous waste in, in that area if we don't do that. So, to me, the, the lessons learned from, from what they're doing in Kailua is, is garnering all the roles, authorities, everyone has anything to do with taking care of, of that, that area, to understand that area. And if you so choose to change the area, then everyone, again, understands what the change will become and then and complement if you had to build on it for, for any reason. How much do you, and then how are you going to take care of it versus just letting the construction industry change it? Which is what pretty much what Alawai is, right? That's, so that, there's the difference. Kailo hasn't had that situation quite yet. It was threatened. But yeah, it, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at but, some yeah. point, there's only so much land on this island, yeah. as, as you know, because... When we all yeah, grew up, yeah. we never thought the Aina Haina uh, yeah. uh, mountainside would yeah. be cut up so yeah. badly. Yeah. Right. Is there something uh, coming out of the Anacostia uh, activity uh, in what, Smithsonian uh, yeah, that ties uh, this yeah, together? What, what was uh, very interesting, so there being here, uh, they then wanted me to uh, share the stories of what we're doing here in Hawaii, in Kailua, uh, with their symposium that was on uh, March the 28th where also uh, there were 22 other panel members coming from across the country, from California, uh, Los Angeles, uh, to, to the Midwest, and also those on the East Coast, uh, sharing what their communities are doing, collaborating uh, with the city, with the state governments, and other organizations, uh, not only uh, to stop you know, further pollution of the river, further pollution of the air, uh, et cetera, but how they could restore it once again for educational purposes. Let's pick up on that yeah. theme in a minute here. Just the, so that people know, we had a, quite yeah. a conversation outside before this yes. program began, yeah. and uh, uh, we, we have some people of passion here. Yeah. Well, let's just break your passion for a moment. Okay. We'll take a quick break and come right back to the educational right. component. Yeah. That's where it's all going to boil yeah. down to. Aloha, I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Aloha, my name is Paul Jackson, better known as PJ, and my local interest is in sports. I have my own sports radio show at KWAI AM 1080 that you can stream live. I also have my own website, pjsportsradio.com. We have live guests in studio, and we talk about discussions and topics that everyone wants to know locally here on the island. We cover everything from surfing to basketball to whatever's going on locally, sports-wise. We try to do our best and cover the topics in-depth as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining PJ here on Hawaii Sports Update. Mahalo. Welcome back, folks, to our show, Where the Road Leads. We're talking about the road leading to an environment near you, whether you're Siena Costia River in, uh, in, in D.C. or the Alawai Canal in our major river here on Oahu or Kauai Nui and the Uniava Canal, which is our next uh, next down in scale. We're talking about, uh, just before the break, we we're talking about the educational component that is common to all of these. That is, the education in the sense that this is something that we need to have our kids learn about. But secondly, it's through education that we pass information around. 
And so is there something we can do to tie together? Again, I like tying things together. The activity in Kauainui, the activity in Anacostia, and the activity in Alawai at the educational level. Uh, with with the uh, in in Washington D.C. with the Anacostia, especially the Anacostia Community Museum, which lo is located outside of, of Washington D.C. in a black neighborhood historically, where uh, uh, the blacks were enslaved and, and freed e even before the uh, building of, of Washington D.C. They have a long history there, but they, this is where the uh, museum is is located. And the museum is one that provides the educational exhibits that tells the history, the, the uh, cultural history of Washington, D.C., as well as the environmental history that is taking place in that area there. So uh, along with the uh, educational efforts uh, in this, this is going out to the community, uh, having educational tours of the uh, areas in which they're restoring along the Anacosta River, um, and then uh, in involving uh, the communities uh, there, uh, the different groups uh, in the restoration project. So they've uh, moved along, they're there. ahead of us in that regard. They've got oh, a yes. physical museum, they've got organized tours, yes. and people can start to see the whole picture, yeah. sort of like a national yeah. park. Yeah. So we have to get there in our condition yeah. here, both in Kailua yeah. and in the Alawai. Yeah. Kailua is probably easier to do than the Alawai, because the Alawai has so much hooky hooky and so much yeah. push and pull. How would you envision uh, achieving that sort of thing in in Alawai, maybe as part of a whole exemplary state? So the, I see the Alawai is, is a little different in what's being done in Kailua. I mean, it's both education, but we're going to use the Alawai to increase the STEM education, to increase the awareness. So it's going to be science that matters. It's going to be taking schools from the different valleys, from the, the elementary all the way to the high school and all the way to the university because the university sits in there. How, you know, how do you, how do you take care of an owl? I mean, how do you, how do you start charting uh, where, where water is becoming polluted, where uh, albizia trees are going to cause flooding? So, you know, all why may be a little different from what's being done, you know, at, 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 in Kailua. And it's going to be more a component of how do you systemize all that thinking into the schools and then use that to energize these kids to want to do science? Because at the end, that's, it's, it's going to be a coalition of everyone's efforts to clean the Alawai. That's a, and, and the point that Chuck brings yeah. up for the Anacostia experience of so the museum as a focal point, as a center point to cause attention, wouldn't that be a neat thing to have in the Alawai? I don't know where we'd even put one, but a, a center activity of some kind, a center point of information exchange, a center point of touchstone to the Alawai. So it's not just a, a stream that takes uh, our fertilizer deposits and shoots them out to the ocean. It's a piece of the living fabric of Waikiki. Because it's at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect our tourism if we do not keep it clean and we do not take care of it. Uh, so it's a little different, but it's really driven by an economic factor and it's driven where you can use it to do science. So STEM as the argument to get into it, mapping uh, what we have yeah. and mapping where the future has to go, yeah. but the museum concept, how, what do you yeah, think about that? Yeah, it, um, in, in fact, that's what you know, I recommend it to others. If we in a different communities in, in Hawaii, in Honolulu, Oahu, could tie in with the Bishop Museum because they have all of the artifact resources, both uh, the Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian history, as well as the what natural uh, resources there. And then uh, you would have, say, satellites uh, of, 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 of the uh, museums in Kailua, in Waikiki, Alawai. But you need, you need to really to have a place where groups could come to, where individuals, the students could come to. Right now in Kailua, we don't have that place. Actually, it's working out of the back of my car where I bring, you know, poster boards and everything else and tools there. But this is where the Kwainui Hamakua Master Plan comes in, but it calls for cultural ecological sites around Kwainui where groups would come to, to learn about, you know, the cultural and natural resources about in that particular area, and then, and then what they could do 
in the stewardship for carrying responsibilities. Mm -hmm. so this is happening there in Anacostia and the rest of the country. How would we do that in, in the Alawai? Have an adjunct of the Bishop Museum dealing with the Alawai, which would be not a pretty picture necessarily because it, it was a pretty picture at one time. It's become unpretty by virtue of uh, man's actions. Well, I mean, exactly what, what we're talking about. To me, you could take a historical perspective of what it looked like before and then slowly hmm. get a picture of what it is now and then see how we're going to get it back. Because at some point, you, you're not going to get it back to the exact pristine level. You just it, Urbanization has, has changed that. But then it will drive a different discussion on how do we get it back to where we want it, or what are all the steps to get to it? Because it's very easy to go from pristine to, to where it is now and get it back to there. So you can show a picture from before and where it is now and then show the process of where you're going to go back. If it's we the had same a museum the like that with the ability to do workshops and bring the kids in, and a kid could, I'm just thinking if I was a kid in sixth grade, for example, and I had to deal with uh, some kind of toxic materials in the, in the sludge of the Olawai, and I then would suddenly see that and maybe make my life goal to do something to reduce that. And, and that would lead me into a STEM direction because that's how you're going to work it, but also lead you into the direction of, co of coordinating with the community and, and collaborating with others who uh, may be causing a problem in the first place. Because so, you know, teach these kids, you're doing science that matters. Yes. And, and, it, and it's just not one plus one is two. I mean, it's not just looking at a, you know, at a microscope. It's, it includes everything. It includes the whole of society when you're doing science. So where are we going to put this museum in the Olive Line, Daryl? It, it could be at one of the uh, uh, the, the parks along the Olive Line, the, uh, you know, there, using some of the rooms there uh, as well. And uh, this is where you have, for instance, the Olive Line, uh Community Association has, has been involved, you know, with the restorations in, in, in the Olive Line. And so you, this is where you could have meetings, speakers coming in. You could have uh, also uh, the um, tours going out to the different areas, not only along the Alawai, but all the way up to Malka, to Manoa, Palolo, and so forth, where, where the water is beginning to flow. And the Just like we need in Kawinui. Yes. Same, the same exact yeah. hydrology yeah. picture yeah. of yeah. flow and yeah. such. Yeah. Involving, and of course, it's involving the schools. As you are involving Iwilani schools, so forth, it's not only the private schools but the public schools as well. And uh, and 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 it it, it bridges you know, all what disciplines that are taught in in the schools. It doesn't just have to be science, you know. It could be the arts. It could be you know uh, the, the social studies and English, uh, etc. Uh, studying the different aspects, you know, of, of the uh, wash and the uh, waterways ecosystem. Because uh, you're exactly right. I mean, you include people that want to be attorneys yeah. because it's going to include policy, laws. It's going to be the, the techie people, the, the science. But it's also going to include people in marketing. You're going to have to tell the story. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is a whole society to tell that story. Yeah. And that's where we need some kind of a centric yeah. activity to pull people together. Right now, yeah. well, Kailua's getting there, yeah. but all I is so diverse and so diffuse, yeah. isn't it, in terms of interest that there's no one in charge. Yeah. Now, in the other communities th throughout, uh, throughout the country, it's not only just education per se, but using these areas for recreation, for sports, you know, for fishing and so forth. The, uh, the Latino community in Los Angeles has been actively working uh, on this project and, and getting, because most of these waterways are areas, you know, where uh, minority groups live, and they're the ones, or the poor, as well as minority groups, and they're the ones throughout the years have been highly impacted, you know, due to the urbanization process. So in the restoration efforts there, uh, they're uh, getting, you know, these groups, you know, in, in playing, in, in having places where they could be playing baseball or soccer and so forth, and this is another way of involving the youth and also, also to be able to teach them of the importance of caring for the water areas of, of their community. So we need a balance of some kind yes. where we have the opportunity to touch the, uh, the actual environment yeah. and also see the uh, intellectual components yeah. of it, so to speak, in the STEM mentality. But we still need, a, at the bottom line, you need a place to come. You yes. need a place where material can exist and you need uh, sort of a uh, 
a way to penetrate out and, and touch and see the dimensions of the yeah. area. And so this is where the communities with their respective organizations can work uh, with the um, public schools, the educational systems, you know, uh, with the teachers in, in the public schools. Uh, in Koinui, uh, we have a, a Koinui educational um, uh, initiative uh, that has been written uh, where we are taking um, the um, uh, uh, school administrators and teachers and so forth on tours around Koinu Marsh, Marsh and pointing out the different areas, the potential educational uh, opportunities that can come from these particular areas and how we could work uh, with both the private and public schools to bring their students uh, to the marsh or we going to the classrooms themselves, you know, and giving talks about uh, the uh, watershed of Kailua, the Ahupua, the historical uh, ways in which the Hawaiians manage this, this ecosystem, and of course the changes that have come out throughout the years, and what we're presently doing today. And that that's fascinating because we would end up with a, a picture in Kauinui that's quite different from the picture in the Alawai, but they would have originated with the same basic concept of Oahu management many years ago. Yeah. So what a what a transition. We've gone one direction in Alawai and we've gone a different direction in in um, Kailua and of course a completely different direction out in Makaha yeah. or yeah. in Yeah, okay. The, the other thing you know, I was invited, you know, to uh, to share my stories about Kauinui, but I also recommended that at their next symposium be two thousand seventeen. This group here? Yes, yeah. Uh, that that also other communities on Wall, such as Alawai, Alawai bring them in. Probably you could also be one of the speakers and and, and and talking about what what you folks are doing uh, in Alawai, because this is this was an opportunity, uh, bringing the um, uh, the issues and and the things that are being done in Kailua, Kauai to the national level, and the same thing can be done, you know, with Alawai and other projects. In fact, I was uh, looking at the news report as to the homeless that are fronting the area of uh, Kapa, uh, the Kalihi Stream, Kapalama Stream yeah. there. Uh, so something has to be done there to That's to a, correct that third situation. Yes, right. to correct that situation there, helping the homeless, but at the same time restoring that particular area uh, as well. Uh, is there a similar situation here in Anacostia in terms of land use change and, and homelessness and this sort of thing that uh, the water watershed is dealing with? There's a lot of development that's going, uh, going on in Washington, D.C., and especially in the Anacostia area. Uh, one of the sessions was the gentrification and the new urbanism, which means that uh, okay. these are areas where you have uh, light industry or people who are uh, low income people that have been living in this area for many years are being you know asked to leave pushed out the buildings are destroyed and new what uh, condominiums and and living areas are, are, are coming up that sounds like kakaako doesn't it yes uh, very and then, uh, yeah. what, what are we gonna do about mapuna puna next yes. but uh, let's address that when we come back from our yeah. next break sure aloha i'm chili akina president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, and what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network, where Ehana Kako and we Good afternoon, you. everyone. Welcome back again. Ted Ralston here, and our guest, General Darrell Wong, retired uh, United States Air Force. Dr. Chuck Burroughs, retired out of Kamehameha School, but not retired. No. <laughs> uh, and uh, never will be retired, mm -hmm. I'm sure. And, and both men are, are incredibly passionate about the environment here in Hawaii and about the educational prospects of that and about the future uh, that we leave behind when we all exit stage right. You may have noticed that uh, we're all 
a little bit in the silver-haired domain here. <laughs> it would be nice to get some 40-year-olds on this panel, wouldn't yeah. it, and see what, what they think, because they may, what are these guys crazy? That's not, yeah. a, that's not far a stretch. I mean, yeah. you get the younger kids yes. thinking the same. You got it, that's right. So we were, what we were talking about at break was, uh, is there a way that, that in, a, in a more formal sense, we can tie together these initiatives that are taking place, uh, you know, pocketed. We got the Kailua activity. Uh, it doesn't have a common cross tie except this table here between Alawai. And then there's other areas on Oahu, Waimanoa, mean, where we live, for example. Uh, because there's not only is there the environmental protection, there's also uh, disaster uh, preparation, there's a sea level rise, there's threats that are coming at us commonly that would be the other way these things tie together. And then the one that we love to love, but we can't quite define it yet, that's the cyber consequence. These things, whether we like it or not, these things are all tied to cyber. Because we're talking about, even on the STEM side, if we're putting sensors in the streams and, uh, and such, and pumps to move water around, well, Any cyber... Time you go wireless, you need... And, and as soon as that can be penetrated, it, or we have a fault, we have a, an adverse consequence. So, what I'm thinking is that, uh, we'll just talk about it right here, is there a way we could get the various interested parties to come to a common table and share sort of a common evolution of how the modern Ahupua ought to go forward, recovering from the past, but also yeah. respecting the fact that something like Alawai is probably never going to go back to what, uh, what Waikiki was uh, years ago before all the landfill took place. Uh, how would we, who would we talk to to do that? How would, we, how would we tie these all together? What kind of a seminar would we create or what kind of a network? So, silence. But no. So, I mean, if you talk about community, so you can go, I, I, you know, I talk about, you got to get to the basic component. You got to have leaders in that community that, that want, to, want to do this thing in that community. Then you build the, the bow wave of, 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 of the community. And then that, that'll transfer to, to um, you know, uh, our state legislators, city and county of Honolulu, and, and all these other agencies, because these are things that matter to the people in the state of Hawaii versus you know, we live in our own little homes and we don't care what, what ex extends beyond that. But now people are looking beyond just their own house. So what you just said is we got to personalize this down to the individual level. And then that then invokes the responsibility that, that people should be developing. And then we need the 40-year-olds at this table to see where they are. Uh, we need 40-year-olds on this table. Uh, all you 40-year-olds out there, next week. And uh, no, in, in, <coughs> in the community, there different um, segments within that community and it's getting those segments uh, together uh, you have a civic uh, segment there uh, people who are involved with the for instance the Waikiki neighborhood board etc that's that's a starting point there uh, people who uh, are interested in the in the conservation or restoration of Hawaii such as the Hawaii uh, community association that's another segment there but you also have uh, the uh, Hawaiian cultural segments, the uh, uh, halau hula, uh, that, um, that can be involved, you know, with the, the, the cultural aspects of, of, of that ahopua that, you know, that ties in Waikiki. In fact, that's a very big ahopua. And there's a, a lot of stories. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, Mo'olelo, traditional stories about this particular area that most people don't know. So that would be a good way to educate the people and to have them, you know, learn about it uh, as well. You have the schools all in that area, and that's a big component, both public and private schools. Then, of course, you have the churches there uh, that are in, involved in some way with the concept of the caring of, of the creation. Uh, not only the Christian churches, but other interfaith churches, such as the Buddhists, uh, even the Muslim group there, Jewish as well, uh, all on the same page of wanting to do, have done uh, something in um, protecting and, and caring for, for the creation. So we have the community of Oahu yep. in, in that regard, cutting across all the yep. social levels and yep. the different yep. cultural yep. levels, yep. dealing with the, the land we live in. Yeah. And where that land's going, where that do we have an organization like that? Is there a vehicle how that we no, could? We don't have an organization like that. I think it's whole exemplary state. <laughs> well, I mean, the, yeah. to kind of expound on what, what we just talked about is that 
Hawaii is such a diverse culture, yeah. but in all the cultures that we have, I think working the land is, yeah. is, is, the, is, is the basis yeah. because everyone came here, you know, the, the, the Koreans, the Japanese, the Chinese, uh, the Portuguese, everyone came working in the fields initially. And so they came from very agricultural yeah. society. Yeah. So going back to the roots of when our ancestors yeah. came here, and it is the Hawaiians for sure, yeah. but then all the other uh, ethnic groups came here, came here to work the land initially. Yeah. So agriculture and land, which leads to, in terms today's terms, food, food security, and that's all part of the economic uh, resilience and sustainability and thriving that are the figures of merit that ultimately matter here. Uh, so we're talking about it, Chuck. Yeah, your so responsibility what, so, yeah, so, tomorrow. So what, yeah. So I think a model could be what we're doing in Kailua. Expanded in to Kailua. the island. Yeah, because it does involve the cultural, especially with the Hawaiian organizations. In fact, there's about 11 or 12 uh, different halal groups in, in, in Kailua. Uh, we also have the Kailua Historical Society that's written the book about Kailua, you know, going back from the beginnings to up to the, the 50s. And, um, and um, talking about the farming, the ranching, and so forth, the dairy that was going on at that particular time, and especially the time when the Chinese were growing rice in Kwainui, when the right, right. terror Wouldn't was no longer. Just thinking <laughs> yeah. about something, September 2016, the world's going to be here, all 3,600 yeah. people thinking about the World Conservation Conference. Wouldn't it be nice to have had this Oahu community meeting uh, thinking along these lines, so at least we all are aware of each other? and have uh, maybe some common themes like what Daryl suggested is all tied to the land, it's tied to agriculture, which we interpret today as food security. So some kind of, uh, we, we need to start right now. We're talking 18 months before everybody here is here. And, and in fact, the label, you've already generated the title for this, it's Hawaii Exemplary State. And this would be an example of that exemplary state. And yet the, the different watersheds are gonna be different. Some are well developed, some are hammered beyond recognition. Uh, and uh, everything in between. So, but, it's but we have to deal with that. To that community. Right. And so the community at, it starts it and the community ends it. The community is the end of the story arc and but the beginning of the story arc. Just like yeah. Kailua did. Yeah, and what, and what can be done and what they are doing. You know, that's, that's the so, important thing. So we need. So uh, uh, for this uh, worldwide uh, um, <laughs> event that will be taking place. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Steve Montgomery, who's been involved with the Steve Flint. Who? Dr. Stephen Montgomery. Okay, right. He's an entomologist, but he's been in, he's also uh, one of the uh, Sierra Club uh, leaders for for many years, and he's been involved in in bringing the group to Hawaii, and so and so one of the uh, activities that the, as far as field trip activities is uh, coming out to Point Near Marsh, which is which he is planning down. Um, so maybe we could have him uh, another time talking about the current plans for the world uh, you know, conservation that will be taking place here <coughs> and, and the activities uh, that they'll be having. So I'm, I'm, I'm going back to what I'm thinking of. Taking something, something really positive out of this very discussion here is this notion of a community of Oahu thinking about the environment in a way that it's it's in our minds at the time of 2016. And you probably need one of, of the other islands as well. Each island ought to have its own concept of how its community is thinking about things. The example I like a lot is the uh, statue uh, restoration in uh, Javi of, uh, that I gave you the book, I Kohala. trust you read it, North Kohala. And uh, that, that, that is a small example of a larger issue here. But the whole community came together yeah. and it became it started as a science project, it turned yeah. into a community project, and that was the mechanism of the yeah. solution, a community-based project with everybody, uh, perhaps not necessarily all in agreement, but all aligned, and that's what we have to so get to Think here. about this. I mean, if, if you let only one aspect of society dictate everything, say the, the developers, they could develop this island and make fictitious everything, right? I mean, they could cover everything and give you a fictitious lake, give you a fictitious waterfall. But you know, if but we here who live here, and we may, may not be Hawaiian, but our ancestry has been here, like the natural beauty of Hawaii. So at some point, there has to be some balance of construction with cultural yeah. aspects, 
with the beauty of these islands, some of it you're going to have to give up, but some of it you have to keep. But everyone has to work together to make that decision and not let big money drive drive this thing. And uh, so, to me, the Kauai Marsh presents a different problem than the Alawai presents a problem, where even in Waianae, uh, the valleys there present a different problem. Is is how do we take care of it? and educate people to do that. And, and how do we even educate uh, the construction industry? So we, we've, what we've come to is it, it ultimately is personal responsibility uh, that we all have to bear. We have to tie that together through a community effort, and the community has to be at the beginning and the end of these solutions, and we need an Oahu orientation. So your job tomorrow, <laughs> now that you're back from D.C. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, two gentlemen who are very passionate in this issue, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that uh, a lot of folks out there are equally passionate. So. We have uh, something we hadn't thought about here, but that's the 2016 conference and how we need to collect this stuff and act upon it uh, between now and 2016 to look like we're together, not yeah. fragmented. So, folks, uh, uh, sorry for getting excited here, but uh, let me ask Daryl and then Chuck, what would you like to have people take away from hearing this conversation or watching this uh, program today in 30 seconds? I think at the end of the day, understand <coughs> what you, you live in the community that, that you live in, take ownership of it. and and get involved rather than expecting someone else to do it. Wow, that's powerful stuff, Daryl. Well, is, but it's, it's basic. I mean, it's going to be your property value. And I, and I echo and the same. And your children. I echo the same thing, too, is finding out, you know, what groups in your community are involved, you know, with these uh, issues and concerns, and, uh, and volunteer, you know, to, to work with them, to help them. Okay. That's the only way where things get done. Gentlemen, I thank you very much. Thank Dr. you. Chuck Burroughs, yep. Thanks, our Jay. frequent flyer, yeah. Daryl Wong Thanks. on this show. And we thank uh, Jay for the studio. We thank uh, Zuri for running the show for us. And uh, folks, uh, go off and have a nice weekend. Ted Ralston, our show, Where the Road Leads, well, signing off until next Friday.